Hi, I'm Mrs. Lansdow, and today we're going to talk about coping strategies. And you might be saying, coping strategies? What is that? Well, coping strategies are just activities that you do to manage your stress. In a previous lesson, we talked about stress, and we talked that it's like a feeling that you have, and it's not like an angry feeling. It doesn't want to make you scream, but stress is like a nervous, anxious energy inside of you. And so these activities that I'm getting ready to show are just coping strategies that help you get to calm. Okay? Sometimes it takes you to calm. Sometimes they take you and help you refocus. And sometimes they give you more energy because sometimes we need energy. All right, so taking a look at my list, I just put a few of these coping strategies up there. You might have a lot of different coping strategies, and we're going to get to that, okay? But let's take a look. Some of the coping strategies I felt like were important were box breathing. In a previous lesson, I taught you how to box breathe, and there was a chart on it. Remember, we went like this. We were breathing in for four counts. We held it for four counts. And we let it out for four counts. Then we held it for four counts. And we did that three times. That helps your heart rate go down a little bit. It gets you to calm. And so that's a coping strategy that somebody could do. Another one could be count to 10. And someone's like, Mrs. Lansdowne, counting to 10, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, that's not what I mean. Counting to 10. Maybe with your eyes closed and with your breathing, you can count to 10. Like, 1, 2, Three, four. Do you see how slow I'm doing it? Do you see I close my eyes for a little bit of relaxing? Yeah, and that too can bring you back to calm. So counting to 10 with some breathing with your eyes closed. How about go for a walk? Well, we could do that now we're at home. So maybe you walk around the inside of your house. Maybe you are allowed to walk around the outside of your house. Maybe with your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad, you can go on a walk in your neighborhood or where you live. But going for a walk certainly helps bring you back to calm. That's another coping strategy. Another one, sometimes people just get out paper and they draw or they color. Some people, that's very calming for them. So that's a coping strategy. Okay. Another one could be read a book. Now, it's not looking for a book to read. It's you already have a book and you're in the middle of reading it and you keep it off to the side and it's your go-to book for when you need to just Calm down, you just pick up that book. So I always make sure I have a book that I go to. And you could have one of those books too. Even if yours is a picture book, it's your go-to book that helps calm you down. Maybe exercise. Exercise usually raises our heart rate. And so maybe you need energy to do something. So exercise could help you focus. Okay, a game or a puzzle. Some people do that as a coping strategy. Very calm. And the last one is listen to music. Maybe they put earbuds in. Maybe they go for a walk with their music. All right. And that's a coping strategy. Now, you probably have other coping strategies. Maybe you do yoga or maybe you use a fidget spinner. All right, maybe. Um, maybe you write in a journal. Keep like all your thoughts in a journal. Maybe that's a coping strategy that you have. 
You might have lots of different ones and that's a-okay. But today I'm just kind of looking at these. So today we're gonna do some writing with it, okay? Today we're gonna pretend that you're gonna send a letter to a good friend and you wanna share your top three coping strategies. So maybe your friend could use one of those coping strategies, all right? So I have to decide out of all of these, what are my top three coping strategies? So let me go first and I'll show you what I'm doing. So I have to find my top three here. Well, let's see. When I look at it first, I think, huh, box breathing is probably one of my go-tos. So I'm gonna say that, that that's gonna be my top. That's gonna be my first one. And then um, I like the idea of listening to music, all right? So I have my phone, I just put my earbuds in and I listen to some music, sometimes while I'm doing other things. But for me, it's very calming, all right? So I like listen to music. That would be my number two. And then my number three, what would it be? Um, probably exercise. Because there are lots of times where I need to focus and I need to burn some energy. And so exercise is a good way to do that. So it's a coping strategy. So those would probably be my top three, okay? Now, I'm gonna write a letter to my friend and I'm gonna share my three, my three coping strategies. But I don't think I wanna give my best coping strategy first. I think I want her to listen to my best strategy in my letter. I want her to listen to that last. All right, so I think I'm gonna start with my second coping strategy and I'm gonna start writing and it's gonna be listen to music. Then I'm gonna go with my third and I'm gonna write about exercise. Then at the end, I'm gonna write about box breathing. Do you see how I saved the best for last? It's the last thing she's going to remember. And so that's why I want that one last. All right, so I said we're writing a letter today. And we are. And we, I want us to think of, do you remember when we did the tables and legs? So we had a, a tabletop sentence, and then we had detailed leg sentences. Okay, we're gonna kinda keep that same idea for our writing today. So let's take a look, let's take a look. I already started the letter because I did the beginning. That wasn't our focus today, so I went ahead and wrote it for you. So my beginning says, Dear Colby, that's one of my friends. So Dear Colby, I hope you are doing well. I want to share my top three coping strategies with you because they might help you cope right now. All right, so I'm ready to start my tabletop sentence. All right, so let me take a look. My tabletop sentence, I'm gonna save this one for the last, and I'm gonna start with listen to music. Okay, I can do that. Listen to music. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna write, let's see, my first coping strategy is listening to music. Okay, so there's my tabletop. Tabletop, okay? My first coping strategy is listening to music. Tabletop. Let me bring out my tabletop so you guys can see what we were talking about. Remember, tabletop and leg detail, leg detail, leg detail. All right, so we have the tabletop. Now I need some leg details. All right, so about listening to music. Well, let's see. My first coping strategy is listening to music. 
All right, so I have to think about something that has to go with, with music. Um, let's see, music makes me think positive. Ooh, okay, so music makes me think about the positive. All right, I don't think about the negative. I think about the positive. So music does that. Makes me think positively. Um, let's see, when I listen to music, ooh, I close my eyes and breathe slowly. All right, so I close my eyes and breathe slowly. Okay, that's a detail sentence, a detail sentence, and how many do I need? Oh, yeah, three. Okay, another one about music. Um, let's see. Hmm. This strategy calms me down. Yeah. So this strategy calms me down. Boop. Period. Changing colors. All right, because I need a new tabletop. All right, so I have my first coping strategy is listening to music. Music makes me think about the positive. I close my eyes and breathe slowly. This strategy calms me down. All right, there's our first one. Now, what did I say I was writing about second? Let's see, I did, I was saving my best for the last. And then I went to listen to music so next, I'm going to write about exercise. Okay, so exercise. So since I started it this way, I'm going to write my second coping strategy is. So my second coping strategy Um, is exercising. Perfect. Now, that was my tabletop. Now I need some leg details. Okay, exercise. What about exercise? Now, exercise makes my, um, makes my heart beat faster. All right, so actually... It gives me more energy. So those are two details right there. So, so exercise, I'm going to say this makes my heart be go faster. So it makes my heartbeat go faster. Um, let's see, what else does it do? Um, mm, it helps me focus. Yeah, absolutely. So it raises my heartbeat. Um, it gets blood moving faster. Yeah, so my blood moves. It's your heart is beating faster. That means your blood's moving through your body, which is a good thing. All right. So this makes my um, blood move. So this makes my heartbeat go faster. Exercise makes my blood move faster. All right, so my heartbeat goes faster, my blood's moving faster, and it helps me focus. Detail sentence. Excuse me. It helps me focus. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I have my first, my coping strategy was listening to music. 
Second, my coping strategy was exercising. What did we say my third one was going to be? Remember, saving the best for last? Oh, yeah, box breathing. That's going to be my tabletop. I have to think of a sentence, and that will be my tabletop. Now, I need your help with this one, all right? You're going to kind of help me work through this. So far, my letter is pretty good. I might have to go to a second page. Can you imagine your friend getting a two-page letter from you? Oh, that would be awesome. So let's flip this page. All right. Now we're going to talk about box breathing, okay? So let's switch our colors and box breathing. All right, so when I think of box breathing, it's going to be my third coping strategy is, so my third coping strategy, oops, is, Box breathing. Okay, so what is it about box breathing? Um, let's see, box breathing. Well, let's see, box breathing, um, you breathe slow and that calms me down. Okay, so my third coping strategy is box breathing. I breathe slow. And it calms me down. Okay. So I breathe slow and it calms me down. Um, makes my heartbeat go slow. Yeah, so exercise makes it fast. This breathing makes it go slower. So it brings my heartbeat down. So it makes my heartbeat slow down. Okay. Okay. So I have a tabletop and a detail in the detail. I need one more. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, it brings me back to focus. Yeah, it does. It does. So... It always brings me back to focus. Bing. Wow, good job. You guys are great, and you had great ideas. Fantastic. But if I'm writing a letter, am I done? You're right. No. No, I had a beginning. I told him about my three strategies. I gotta close this up somehow. So let me think about how would I close this up? Um, maybe I'm gonna tell them I um, hope one of these coping strategies works for you. Yeah, okay. I hope one of these coping strategies works for you. Bing. And then I have to sign it. Oh, yes. So I would probably write your friend. Your friend, and since I know this friend, I would use my first name. So your friend, I would write Shauna. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so you wrote two pages, and it's a letter for your friend. You started with, you saved your best strategy for the last. 
So it's the last thing they read. So you started your letter with the second, all right? And then you do the third, and then you came back to the first. It's so powerful, such a powerful strategy. We did the tables and legs inside of here, and what a great way to practice writing. So if you were in Mrs. Lansdell's class, I would have you make a list of what are your coping strategies. What do you use to cope with stress? Do you have a list? If you don't have a list, you better make one. What are three things that you can do to cope with stress? Then take those three and maybe you too could write a letter to your friend. That would be exciting, especially during this time you haven't got to see your friend. Wouldn't they enjoy getting a letter from you? Maybe your parents could mail it. That would be awesome. All right. If you are not at the developmental stages of writing to write this, you can certainly draw pictures of what you do to cope with stress. Now, if your teacher has a different assignment for you to do, please feel free to do that assignment. Today, our goal was to think of coping strategies to handle stress. What do you do when you get that feeling inside of you? How do you manage it? Because what we don't want to have happen is have that stress build up and build up and build up and then you do explode. You do yell. You do act out as if you're angry. And we don't want that to happen. We want to have coping strategies in place for when we start to feel just a little bit of stress. And if we use our coping strategies, then we can stay calm much more of the time. All right, that was our lesson for today. If, you, if your teacher has something else for you to do, make sure that you are doing that. Have a great day.